So today's campfire with Guidebook is how to build an event app in 10 minutes. Basically, it's a 20-minute talk, so for the first 10 minutes, I'm gonna talk about why you would build an event app, the kind of questions you should be asking when starting out on that journey, um, and then how to actually get people to download it, who's gonna download it, uh, and then we'll do the demo live, what could possibly go wrong, um, where I'd show you how to build an event app in 10 minutes. So, um, I'm Stuart, I'm a product specialist at Guidebook. I'm also a CSA, so um, a customer success associate. I build guides day to day. Um, I support clients that are building guides for themselves. Um, today's campfire objectives are, are these, as I just touched on. Um, so let's just dive straight in. Why would you build an event app? There's loads of reasons. This is a survey from um, a few hundred event organizers that we conducted. Um, just to pick out some of the really key ones here, you know, we can make last minute changes, a really sort of obvious thing that you can't do with a paper program. Um, I can instantly message attendees, so that's what push notifications, that's gonna buzz in their pocket, it's gonna come on their home screen. Um, obviously everyone likes to save a bit of money on printing and shipping. Um, just generally in that kind of eco thing of just saving trees, who doesn't want to do that? Um, lots and lots of reasons. Let's kind of just assume we're past the why and we all want to build an event app. So what are the important things that we should now be thinking about? Um, these are kind of examples of stuff that maybe we've overheard, maybe clients have said to us, maybe we just can imagine a client saying this kind of thing. It's sort of generally bespoke stuff that's just not important, but people think that it's important based on a gut feeling, based on a meeting that they had once. Um, what we are all about is, you know, we've supported over 30,000 events on the guidebook platform. So we feel like we actually know the questions that you should be asking. Um, so, you know, do you need to see clear data and metrics to help judge the success of your event? Absolutely, yes. Um, can it work across all user devices? You, there's loads of different smartphones out there. Some people today still don't have a smartphone. Can they access the guide in some way to not exclude them completely? Um, will I be able to update and change it last minute? Obviously, we just talked about the advantage an app has over paper, but with some apps, you can't actually change that yourself, or you might require to speak to a developer or speak to somebody in the company we're all about trying to empower you to be able to easily do that last minute yourself. Um, and does a, lot of it, does a lot of the content work offline? Is it native content? These kind of shows are notorious for bad Wi-Fi, black holes. If the whole app requires internet or a lot of the app requires internet, people are just gonna have a bad experience. You want a lot of the information to be native and not require internet connection. Um, let's all kind of say that we're past the why, we're past the what. It would be sort of wrong of me to just say you're not going to face any of these potential challenges. Probably some of you have thought these things yourself. Um, you've definitely probably overheard people saying them, maybe in your company, people just generally about event apps. Um, so, you know, it's always good to be armed with the fact that not everyone's going to be with you. You're, you might have to fight this internally, externally. Um, and if you make your decisions correctly, then you'll be able to fight this these objections. So we're past all of that now. We've, we've decided we want an event app. We've decided who we're going to go with. We've built the event app and now we're on the hardest thing in the world. It doesn't matter how good your event app is. It doesn't matter how bad your event app is. If nobody downloads it, it's a fail. It's, a, it's an equal failure, good or bad. Um, so Kevin Costner did lie. It, just because you build it does not mean they will come. It's sort of just to really drill that fact home. Um, app marketing 101 that every single person should follow, carrot and the stick. You know, the stick, make them need it. Um, have app exclusive content in there that only people with the app can have. Send messages, send reminders. Make it so that people at the event are saying to their friends, you don't have the app, why not? How are you seeing this? How are you accessing that? Um, and then make them want it, you know, give them the carrot, give them social features that are gonna engage them, let them see a Twitter feed, let them tweet through the app, let them vote um, during sessions and live polls so the speaker says, 
what does everyone think? You know, yes or no, and everyone can vote through the app. So a combination of those two is gonna hopefully boost those numbers um, right up there. And then the kind of advanced part of this is obviously the dream is 100% adoption. Um, I hear people saying that like, 25% adoption is good. To me, that just doesn't seem right. I build these all the time. If your app is marketing is spot on, you will have 100% of people download it. There's no excuses. Um, there's an event happening today, about 20 minutes down the road, um, using the guidebook platform. Over 100% of people have downloaded that app. Um, so people, some people have downloaded it maybe on their smartphone, on their tablet. Um, some people that have downloaded that maybe haven't arrived. Um, the point is that it was executed perfectly, the marketing, there was app exclusive content on there so that people had to have it. It was published early. The marketing was strong on site. So if people didn't have it when they got there, it was easy for them to download it. There were ambassadors, people that were on board, on site, not people walking around with a paper program saying, here you go, you know, people were saying, have you not got the app? You need the app. Um, so that's kind of, that's it. That's the, um, the kind of why, what, and who. Um, if there's any questions now, so we'll do a little question before we go into the builder demo. No? Okay, let's, let's jump straight into how to build an event app in 10 minutes. Um, so, um, I'm gonna need to, okay. Hopefully everybody can see this okay. This is the guidebook builder. So this is the CMS. Anybody can set an account up for free. Anybody can create a guide for free. Um, what I'm gonna do is in the next 10 minutes, really, really quickly go in, show you how I can populate a guide with information, actually publish that guide. Um, and some of you, if you want, you can even download the guide. You need to download, download the guidebook app. You can download that from the app store right now. It's free. Um, and then at the end, there'll be a code and you'll be able to access the guide that I'm building right now. So. Let's click on new guide. So this takes me straight into templates. Um, we've built these templates based on our knowledge and experience. Um, these are broken up into subcategories. So I'm clicking on event guide there because it's the most common use case for the thing that most people will build. Um, and I'm gonna choose the conference and trade show template because again, it's probably the most common template, probably the most common use case for guidebook. So straight away you're into a, you know, fill the blanks. If you've ever opened a Facebook account, bought anything online, you know how to fill out forms and this is built in the same way. So I'm gonna go straight in and create Stuart's ETL um, guide. So 10 minute up build. Um, so here's my date, so I'm gonna just pick today's date. I'm gonna go in again, select that. So it's already selected my time zone, save and continue, on to the next step. So here, the branding page where I can actually personalize this a little bit with some imagery, um, some branding, so I can straight away, I've already got some of these prepared, obviously. Um, whoops, let me select that. There we go. Uh, Put a cover image in here, save, save and continue. So it's just constantly just working through the steps to fill the basics out to start with. Um, so let's set this at the Truman Brewery. Um, I can now find that on Google Maps. Uh, there we go, I will save. Uh, the final step of basics is pretty important. Do you want anybody to access this guide or do you want only people that have the redeem code? Um, to be able to access it? Is it sensitive information? Do you only want your company to download it? Or do you not care and anybody can download it? Uh, I'm gonna set this as private. I'm gonna create a code, Stuart ETL. Um, and I'm gonna save and start building. So that's step one of building an event app. The basics are in, it's got a name, it's got a venue, it's got dates. Um, second step now is playing around with my layout. Um, what do I want in, where do I want it? So the drag and drop feature is a really key part of Guidebooks Builder. So I'm gonna want the schedule up there. It's probably gonna be the most clicked on icon. 
Um, I'm going to want my schedule next to that so people can actually personalize themselves what they're going to be doing um, at the event, pick, pick sessions that they particularly want to see. Um, I, I don't want a contact list, so I'm just going to click on that, go in, delete that straight away, get rid of that. Um, an exhibitors list, I think I might want that, but not right now, so I can go in again. I can just hide that for now. Um, when I hide that, it means no user can access that, that feature until I'm happy. Um, I can populate that in the background and then make it live when I want. Um, so I'm kind of happy with that layout now. I'm gonna go straight into the agenda. Generally, the agenda is the most important part of an event app, um, you know, letting people know what's happening, when and where it's happening. So you can, you can populate this in two ways. Manually, I can add them one by one. So I can just go session A, um, it's gonna to start today um, at, let's say, 2 p.m. It's gonna run until 3 p.m. Um, I can put a description in there, I can add an image in there. Um, I'm just gonna save that. Or if you've got a more complex schedule, most people will upload it using a, a spreadsheet. So you can import from file there. Here in the template section, you'll see this is basically the template that Builder knows how to read. So all the information is in the right place. So you download the template from there. You can copy it across from a spreadsheet you've maybe already got. So session name, time, description, location. Um, and then you import it straight here. So I'm just gonna select that file that's already ready on my computer. I'm gonna import data. Generally it takes 10 seconds, so if I refresh that, that should be uploaded now, and I should have a full agenda in my guide. Um, there we go, that's in. If I wanna edit that now for any reason, I wanna change the session title, the time, the description, whatever it is, I can just click in here in Builder and make edits. Um, so that's the agenda. We're, we're running through here, but hopefully you're all taking this in. Um, next I'm gonna do a, what we call a custom list, so basically a list of anything in your guide. I'm gonna put in a list of speakers. Uh, this could be a list of exhibitors, it could be a list of sponsors, whatever it is. Uh, again, I can add it manually. I'm gonna add it here from the file. Once again, there's the templates. Um, so let me select this file. And there we go. Import data. Again, that should take less than 10 seconds. There we go, done. So that's a speaker list that's uploaded. So as we've kind of gone through, obviously you would populate this with far more content, um, but we're doing this fast. So you'll see that on the right is a build progress bar. And that's basically telling me everything that I need to do in order to publish this guide. It's telling me all the blanks that I haven't worked on yet. So. I can click straight from that. The Twitter menu item is enabled with nothing in there. So this in the app itself is a feed. You click on Twitter, any hashtag I put in here, it's gonna pull tweets that reference that hashtag straight into a nice feed. So I can just put Event at Live 2015 uh, in there. I can add that. I can add an account. So any tweets from a certain account is gonna be pulled in. I'm gonna add Guidebook Europe. So I can save that. That's done. Um, Facebook menu enabled, so I can just go to Guidebook's Facebook page, get the URL, plug that in there. Um, so that's done. FAQs is enabled, I'm just gonna hide that for now. Maybe I'll want it in, in the future. Um, two things left, maps. So I'm gonna upload a map, um, this is basically a static image. You want it to be quite good quality so people can zoom in on it. It will work offline, so it's a really handy um, use case. Let me pop that in. So it's obviously really handy in these kind of bad Wi-Fi spots as I've already touched on to have native content that's not gonna require an internet connection. That map is gonna be able to be used at any point. Um, and finally, the sponsors here. I'm just gonna add guidebook because why not? There we go, um, I can add that there. I can make changes to that, I can put more information about Guidebook, and that's it. We've, we've essentially built an event app in less than 10 minutes. Um, there's loads of things that you can do 
obviously in addition to this, adding features is really simple. If the stuff's not there on the template that you want to see, you can add here, you can find more things, you can add them. One thing I do want to quickly add is a web view. So this web view is going to link straight to this website. So as soon as someone clicks on that in the app, it's going to open to this page. Um, that page is actually a guide talk. Uh, it's an event we're having in December, the 8th of December, where basically it's a client event. Someone's going to come along and talk about how, the, how they leverage guidebooks successfully in their company. We're going to do a bit more of a detailed uh, build a demo, and then we're going to do a workshop where people can build guides themselves, ask questions. Um, that link to sign up to that is going to be in this guide. So you save that. That's done. Um, I'm going to just change the name of that quickly, and then I'm going to publish the guide. Um, oh, hang on. So there we go. That's done. Oh, that's saved. That's saved. So let's publish the guide. So generally when you publish a guide, it's gonna need approval from one of our team just to check there's no offensive content in there, there's no blank content. I obviously know that this is good. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go in and approve that right now as we speak. Um, here we go, there it is. Oh, I can approve that. That's done. And now, the final thing is I'm just going to show you that this is my simulator of an iPhone. So if you download the guidebook app at any point today, um, you can simply go in, click on, click on guidebook, click on find my code um, or use code as it is there. This is a bit small. Hang on. Okay. It's kind of cutting that off a little bit. go. That's downloaded the app that we just built in 10 minutes, uh, slightly cut off by the screen here. Um, but yeah, there's the schedule that we uploaded. You can see that's the guide talk agenda for the event on the 8th of December. Um, and yeah, there we go. That's it.